Africa must have self-confidence. We cannot always depend on, on somebody else or on ideas from outside. We must, we must rely on our own ideas, our own way of, of uh, developing the continent. Uh, and I think I think we can do it. Africa must rely on its own ideas. That's according to Peter Mutarika. And it is something the Malawian president has taken to heart. The former professor and lawyer took over the reins of the country in 2014 in the wake of a $32 million corruption scandal under the former administration. The following year, the country was hit by a myriad of climate change challenges, resulting in a drastic drop in crop production. But the Malawian government has now set aside $50 million to assist with food security until the next farming season and has also vowed to curb corruption in the country. I spoke exclusively to President Peter Mutarika to find out more about his action plan for Malawi. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, let me start by looking at uh, Malawi's uh, food situation because that is what's been making the headlines over the last couple of months. Uh, Malawi has declared a state of emergency of its worsening uh, uh, food crisis. There are reports that up to 78% of the country is currently affected. Exactly what is the situation, the food security situation in your country? How many people exactly are affected? Uh, first of all, we have not declared uh, a state of national emergency. Or well, declared a state of disaster. Legally, those two are different. Because uh, a state of emergency, it means you suspend certain things like uh, habeas corpus and so forth. And this is a state of national disaster. Now, uh, yes, most of the countries are affected. You see, what happened was uh, uh, last year we had that uh, terrible flood, January, February um, uh, 2015, and then in the north part of the country we had the drought. And uh, this year, uh, so our, our, our harvest went down, but this year gone down further because of the effects of the uh, Nino effects. And so it's going to be worse this year, according to estimates, uh, probably about uh, 8 million people are in some kind of jeopardy, uh, food is insecure, um, out of uh, about 17 million people. So it, it is a, a serious situation, uh, and uh, you see, it doesn't look like to improve because weather patterns are changing every year, uh, and the rain is no longer pre predictable. So it makes it very, very difficult. Um, uh, but we are certainly uh, doing our best uh, to make sure that. Uh, we respond to the situation. You alluded to uh, 2015 where you had the twin disasters of flooding and drought as well. Had you recovered prior to this year's uh, emergency? Had you recovered at all? Well, we're in the process of recovery. We were in the process of recovery uh, and then we got this other problem, uh, obviously. Though it makes it difficult now uh, to, to have recovery. Uh, it will take some time uh, as long as we have uh, unpredictable um, you know, rains makes it very, very difficult, and also the delays. When I was growing up, you see, the rains used to come in October, and by Christmas time, we're eating green maize, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, nowadays, uh, the rain comes quite late, sometimes November, December. Uh, if it comes at all, and if it comes, it's either so extreme, as happened uh, two years ago, floods and so forth, uh, or, or it doesn't come at all. Or very erratic, it comes and it stops. This year it started very well, uh, but after some time, it just stops. And you know, maize is a very weak crop. It's not resistant to a lot of challenges. Uh, and uh, most of the crop just you know, wilted uh, and uh, was destroyed. So, so that's really the problem. So uh, in terms of the Southern African region and, and the impact that that is having uh, on the food situation in Malawi, because uh, several other countries as well, Zimbabwe, Zambia, mm -hmm. uh, as well as South Africa, Angola as well, are having a food crisis of their own. What impact is this having on your country? Well, yeah, it, 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 well obvious impact is that uh, the, it's competitive, uh, and therefore it means that we're going to pay more for the maize when there's a shortage. 
uh, who means that everyone wants products, the prices will go up. So th that's a problem. And also it means we have to look outside Africa, outside the region, place like Brazil, Mexico, Ukraine, that means transportation. And maybe, you know, maybe double the, the cost, not necessarily double, but a high percentage, as would have paid. So all, all those uh, are challenges, uh, and you know Malawi is landlocked. It means uh, getting the food once it gets to buy uh, Mozambique. So trying to get it over land through trucks uh, to Malawi. So yeah, it is a challenge, but uh, <coughs> we're working on it. Um, and I think we can, uh, uh, we will succeed. Uh, we're, we're confident that we will. Uh, we start early, but the main thing we would like uh, those people who uh, would like to assist to assist us now. We're also buying maize domestically. We already started buying. I believe over 40 or 50 thousand metric tons have already been bought. I'm going to need 1.2 million metric tons uh, to feed the country next year. So it's huge, both in terms of volume and in terms of uh, logistically uh, to get it to Malawi. It's going to be a, 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 real, a real challenge, but uh, we're working on it. So you're talking about uh, Malawi needing the food assistance right now before the end of the year. Correct. For your government, on your government side though, what measures have you put, put in place to ensure that uh, the solution is addressed in the short term and that there's a long term solution to Malawi's perennial uh, drought? Yeah, in the short term of course is buying the maize. Make sure you buy it either locally, as we're doing, through the agriculture and marketing board, which is the government agency. Uh, so we have this entity, which is a government agency, but also operating uh, as a private company with some social responsibilities, uh, as well as uh, economic responsibilities, uh, commercial responsibilities. Um, so we're doing that um, in short term, how to buy the maize. Uh, and short term also we have to start growing maize during the winter. Uh, we are started right now growing. And the good thing about maize, the new variety of maize, uh, you can grow in 90 days. And uh, uh, although we have seasons like winter, but there, there are mild winters, uh, there's no frost. So you can grow maize almost any time of the year, in the 12 months. So we hope we can do thrice cropping. We can 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, uh, three times. So we're already planting uh, maize uh, right now, small holder farms, long term. Uh, long term, we want to be food sufficient. As you probably know, uh, during the time my, my brother was present, introduced the f import subsidy program. And for 10 years, Malawi was food sufficient completely. We're selling maize over Africa, and we're donating overseas, several countries. Uh, we're doing that through these uh, subsidized input uh, uh, programs, uh, um, inputs we had, maize, seed, fertilizer, and so forth. Now, <clears throat> now because of the change with the party, uh, the change is different in the sense that uh, the inputs are no longer effective. Uh, yes, so we have to think about other ways of doing this. So we're moving away now. Uh, from rain-fed agriculture to irrigation. Massive irrigation, and now it's not easy because first of all, you have to have uh, power and uh, our power capacity is very small. At the moment, 351 megawatts. Therefore, you need power, and in most of the places near the lake and rivers, there are no power lines there. Uh, so you're talking about uh, Solar, and as you know, solar is extremely expensive. For one megawatt, you need one hectare land. Then that is another issue of acquiring land. You have to have people who don't want to sell you, or some people want the land and uh, perils and difficulties of getting the land. So there are all sorts of challenges, but we're going to go into irrigation, no matter what happens. Uh, and, and, and so that's why when I answer. Uh, but then we're moving to other, other forms of food. And, and I think that will supplement, complement winter cropping. And of course, rain fed, it doesn't mean that we're going to stop rain fed agriculture. We're simply saying we're going to complement it uh, with uh, irrigation um, and winter cropping. So those are the long term plans uh, irrigation uh, and not depending on uh, 
uh, rent trade and gaja anymore. And, and many are going to be asking you, though, as you alluded to uh, the late uh, President Mutharika's uh, agricultural subsidy program, where, you know, in 2005, uh, Malawi was uh, exporting uh, grain to the, to the region, and today it is again prone to drought issues and food crisis. Exactly what went wrong? Yeah, exactly what went wrong is the, the weather, basically the weather, because the input programs are there, the FISP, uh, farm input subsidy program is there, uh, and the, the seed subsidy is there, we were subsidizing the seeds. What went wrong is simply the weather. But this year we planted, uh, the rains came January, February we planted, there was very good rain the first month, and then it stopped, and most of the crop was destroyed. So what, what went wrong is the weather changed. Uh, there's no question about it, uh, that this thing, uh, uh, is real uh, 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 change and, and do our certain experience in Africa. So that's what went wrong. Uh, it's not policies or anything at all. Uh, it's your objective conditions uh, over which we seem to have no control. But we know how to find a response to these unpredictable objective conditions. We need how to find a response. Uh, that's why we are now talking about uh, all these other measures that uh, I've, I've mentioned, including resilient crops, uh, like uh, tubers, uh, like uh, cassava, for example, uh, potatoes, uh, yams, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, we need to do that, uh, also to mindset change, that food is not only maize, uh, that you can eat uh, without having to eat the same maize. And there was a debate about that uh, in the last uh, few weeks, Your Excellency, where right. uh, there was a debate that uh, uh, as the situation deteriorated, uh, there were reports that you had asked Malawi people to uh, diversify their food supplies, including yeah. eating issues such as uh, grasshoppers and mice. Yeah. What exactly did you say? No, I didn't say it. What I said was, uh, <coughs> I wish I had the tape with me. What I said was that um, in relation to maize, that the other things we can eat, um, crops that are more resistant to weather conditions, and I mentioned three as a group. I, I say the cassava, potatoes, and yams. Cassava, I say kinangwa, potatoes, I say barata, and yams. Now, this is the one I say zicheche. It's Z I C H C H zicheche. Now, some journalists, um, he thought I say zitete. No, zitete means grasshoppers. I don't even know that word zitete because in my area, where we come from, we call them uh, nazombe, grasshoppers. I, I never heard of the word zitete, but they said I say zitete, but I was talking about the three group of tubers, cassava, potato, and, and yams. Now, those are very good supplements. Uh, but also sweet Irish, Irish potatoes. You can also eat that. Um, you don't have to be maize all the time, on sim all the time. So if we do that, um, in fact, some of these are more nutritious. If we did that, uh, we ease the pressure on the maize and on the flour. So uh, that's what uh, I said, and I hope we can correct that.
uh, moving on though, you have been uh, running your government uh, for the last two years against the background of uh, drought, against the background of uh, flooding and uh, lack of donor support in budgetary support. How difficult has it been for you and how have you managed to do that? Very difficult. Uh, when I took over the government in August, uh, um, in June, uh, almost two years ago, uh, we had what was known as cash gate. I don't know if you've heard of this. But under the previous government of uh, the U.S. Banda administration, uh, I think there was a conspiracy of government officials, private sector, and civil servants. But they siphoned off money from the Treasury uh, to the tune of about 24 billion quacks, uh, which comes to about um, probably 70, 80 million U.S. dollars for a small economy like Malawi. That's a big amount of money. Now, because of that, um, the donors were giving us 40% of uh, budget support. Um, they, they decided that um, they, were going, they were going to stop giving us budget support. So it means when, when I came in, there were two problems. One, that uh, the treasure had been completely cleaned uh, by the cash gate. And secondly, that the donors decided that they would stop giving uh, kind of budget support until the system had improved, uh, we, which we, we, and they put certain conditions, uh, which I, I think we met all the conditions. But so <clears> that's <throat> been a continuous change of goalposts. I think we've got three conditions now, there are about 20 uh, conditions, a whole range from governance to what have you, minority rights, and all, all those kinds of things put there. So in the, the essence is that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the 40% uh, is gone. Therefore, uh, it, means, it meant that we had to find how to run a government uh, with 40% less. For day-to-day -day management, but it's a miracle that in two, two years we have managed, you know, to well, manage. I mean, there have been difficulties sometimes, shortage of drugs in the hospital, but we have managed to pay the teachers, the nurses, civil servants, pay our utility bills and, and run the country. And even do some infrastructure, build new roads, uh, and, and, and so forth um, on our own without uh, uh, budget support. In, in the process, we have learned a lot, uh, which, uh, uh, so we're on the road towards, which we always intended anyway, towards self sufficient and moving away from uh, donor support, at least with respect to recurrent expenditure. It came out a bit too early, but we have managed in spite of that. <clears throat> and I think that's a, obviously a direction that uh, uh, we're going to go, no, not by choice, but by design. But uh, I think in the, in the end, in the interest of uh, Malawi, because I'd always say that I wanted Malawi to be self-sufficient within five years, uh, to be, to be in independent of uh, donor support, as with respect to the recurrent. Budget. Right. Uh, if I can just go back to the conditionalities that you've mentioned, and uh, you have talked about having met the conditionalities by the donors before resumption of aid, but that still hasn't been forthcoming. Do you feel that there is still a crisis of confidence, though, in your government, or is corruption still a problem in Malawi? Well, uh, co corruption is always a problem uh, almost in every country in the world. But the thing is, we undertook to fight corruption, we undertook to cut expenditure. We wanted to, to reduce the wage bill and all those things. Well, cut back on expenditure. Uh, uh, this is the first time in, since December when I was in London, I've traveled out of the country uh, just to, to certain months uh, to, to cut backs. Um, uh, you know, missed over 12 very important international conferences, but I want to save money. So we cut back on travel. Uh, and also the necessary expenditures, doing all that uh, to make sure that uh, the resources we have can be used properly. So we're, to, we're asked to cut expenditure, which we have done, um, and try to reform the civil service, especially financial management, which we are doing. <coughs> that cannot be done overnight, as you know. It's very complicated. We are reforming, uh, but what happened after that we had new conditions like uh, access to information bills and we had information like minority rights, uh, governance, 
all sorts of things, um, and uh, what we are doing those already. But uh, we certainly are fighting corruption. It's an ongoing fight, uh, as almost every country faces those kinds of problems of uh, people, uh, civil servants who lack in integrity. Uh, so, so we are doing that. So in terms of uh, Malawi uh, itself, it, has a, it is part of a very attractive uh, wider market Correct. in the sub-region as well as on the continent. I in terms of Malawi itself and its trade ties uh, with China, what is the level of trade between Malawi and China? And where do you see uh, the opportunities for trade, for manufacturing, for industrialization for Malawi from China? From China. Um, it's a growing market. Uh, <coughs> we started our bilateral relations with China only uh, nine years ago, uh, December 2007. So it's only nine years ago. And during that time, uh, the relationship has grown. It's clear that there's a trade deficit against us in favor of China. Uh, we don't have enough products to sell to them. Although we have a duty-free uh, market of over two, 400 uh, products, but we cannot take advantage of it at the moment. You mentioned manufacturing. Now we're going to manufacturing. That's why I, I applied these investments when you manufacture from in agriculture. Agriculture, for example, manufacturing to bring in uh, add value to various crops like soybeans, cowpeas, pigeon beans, uh, peanuts, and so forth. So that will provide that. And then, uh, of course, uh, mining. Uh, growing and manufacturing in general. So we will be moving into manufacturing because for all these years, Mali has been an, an importing and consuming country, but we will not want to be an exporting and manufacturing country. And we are doing that and I think we will succeed. Um, so by increasing foreign investment, <coughs> manufacturing of those products that can be exported, but also growing high value uh, agricultural products like soybeans, uh, cotton, uh, and, and the other copies, we can, in fact, uh, do that. So in the end, we'll be able to access the China market. Uh, but at the moment, but in overall, the relationship has been good for Malawi in terms of infrastructure. The Chinese have built roads, um, one, one or two universities, our parliament, and uh, various, various types of structure. So it is a very beneficial, I think, relationship. And we, we certainly want it to continue and also to expand it. Right. So finally, Your Excellency, you have been now uh, running your government for two years. What are your plans for Malawi for the next three years? Our plan is to move Malawi from aid to trade. We have got to do that. And therefore, establishing the framework but for example, attract foreign investment, manufacturing, uh, and, and so forth. So we can take advantage of all these markets that I've outlined, where we're going duty-free without reciprocity. Uh, so we take advantage of that. So we'll be doing that um, in the next two, two or three years. We'll be moving into irrigation in, in a major way, uh, at two level, small farmers um, at one level, so the means of agriculture, <clears throat> and then there will be um, Green Belt Authority, uh, which will be in, in my office, the president's office, to deal with the large commercial farming. So when he goes in with some of the big commercial farmers, uh, in the me immediate, but eventually, obviously, um, uh, government and others will also move into that. <clears throat> so irrigation will be one of the factors. Um, and then we would like, uh, obviously, to create some kind of resilience, find a way of responding to the threats, uh, like uh, you know, uh, droughts, uh, floods, and all these various things that are uh, threat. We have to respond to that. Find a way of predicting, uh, and then uh, responding. But uh, we are taking one along in the direction of. Uh, self-sufficiency, of course, within a global market. Um, uh, and that means less dependence on uh, foreign uh, 
assistance or complete uh, cessation of uh, uh, assistance with respect to the current budget. But obviously, almost everyone, uh, there's no country that has ever developed without inflow of capital from outside. A uh, private capital, that will encourage. And that's why make all these efforts to attract foreign investment. So that's why we're taking Malawi um, the next uh, several years. Your final comment, Your Excellency, yes. to the people of Malawi, to the wider African region, uh, to the international community, and to your partners like China. I personally am very excited. Uh, as I said at the London Forum in December, that uh, Africa, actually the average uh, uh, profit uh, in foreign investment is 80%. Globalized, but Africa is 30 percent because of cheap labor and raw materials are right there. So I say that instead of seeing Africa as a burden, they must see Africa now as an opportunity. Uh, I, I think that will be my message, um, not only to Africa but also to the rest of the world. Africa is a tremendous opportunity. Just waiting for somebody with initiative uh, and a sense of direction to exploit it. Uh, for, for, for the benefit of everybody. To China? To China. Well, yes, China, we, we continue, um, I think, the relationship. Um, China has committed itself uh, at the FOCAC meeting in Johannesburg. Uh, I, I don't know if you were there or not, but came out with five principles. China wants to uh, health, education, social development, um, infrastructure development and so forth. China really, I think, does want uh, African, just in fact, just, uh, apart, apart from just uh, trading, I, I think they do want Africa to really develop and be on, on its own. And you can see examples of what they've done in China over the last 30 years. And my message to them is to continue uh, to work with us. Uh, uh, as the others, uh, that there's room for everybody in Africa now. You know, our old friends, uh, Western countries, uh, they and always be there. But we have our new friends now, uh, the BRICS countries. They're, they're friends of us. Um, and there's room. They're not mutually exclusive. Uh, so we want both uh, groups to, 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 to see Africa as an opportunity but also to respect us, to respect Africa. Uh, uh, and the and, uh, view now is that mo most of these investors are not taking a different view of Africa. I think they listen to what we want, um, and I think they understand that in the end, we Africans know more about our problems. We live here than somebody who lives in some foreign capital. Excellency, thank you very much. Good. My pleasure. Yeah. And that's all we have time for this week on Talk Africa. Remember, you can join the conversation at home through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And do join us again next week for another edition of Talk Africa. Goodbye.